everyone how are you all thank you for joining me in the studio today i hope you're all well the sunshine is out which is amazing um my son's actually out just behind this door here cleaning my car we'll see what it looks like when i come out of here probably worse than when it started i hope you're all well thank you so much for tuning in again it's lovely to see you all um, I've been waiting all day to have studio today. I've been super excited about it. There's no reason to be super excited. We're, we're doing our lovely craft academy, but I've been excited about it. I think it's because we had um, a day off, didn't we? And then we tried to do studio and it didn't work. We had a few issues with um, trying to sort out YouTube. And I think the issues were not just with us. I think it was YouTube in general because a lot of people couldn't stream that day. So. We're not going to be over precious about it. These things happen. It's not the end of the world. So at least we're here today and we are live. So hello, Annette, Sandra, Selma, Tracy, Yvonne. Hi, Liz, Pat Pepper. I don't, I can never call you Pat, Pat. I have to call you Pat Pepper because it's just a great name. Uh, Maxine, Sharon, Anne, Helen. So lovely to see you all. And thank you for coming every single day. It does mean a lot. And I hope you do get something out of the shows, which I think you do, because I see all of your lovely makes and they're all so inspiring. So what I'm going to do today is we're going to, because we obviously missed the day because of obviously the streaming issues, we're still going to spend that extra day on the stamp. So if you have got the stamp, that's on what we're working on today. So it's this beautiful one here that we're working on. And as you all know, um, it's a large floral one. If I just lean back slightly, just set that one straight a little bit. We're working on this beautiful one here, so you can see the lovely collections on there. And then as this one moves down after today, we're gonna to focus on the beautiful Blossom Branch, which is the big one. Um, and that is that one really lends itself to lots of color and texture and dry brush techniques and things like that. So I'm super excited about that one too. I am excited about everything. If you haven't gathered, I like to talk. I am quite a happy person I think some say it doesn't it doesn't take a lot to make me happy and um, so this is a great channel to visit for those of you that don't know who I am my name is Tony Derrick and I'm a guest presenter on create and craft and we just enjoy craft in life so if it's stamping die cutting coloring painting cutting paper with scissors if it makes you smile then it's okay you come and get the inspiration here as well so if something makes you happy continue on don't care what anybody else says just continue on with that lovely smile on your face so i think we might be getting some people might be getting a little bit of buffering i don't think it's an issue on our end today i think our end's absolutely fine so it might be your internet at your end don't forget to click the little hd button that might help with your streaming and don't forget to click the subscribe button if you are on Facebook, I will post a picture of any makes we do after the show and then we do try and pick some winners, although I haven't done it again for a while, um, and get a card out to a lovely winner. Hello, the three T's, Tony, Tim and Tom. You do know that we fight over the mail. <laughs> we really do. So um, let's have a look. So it seems like a lot of you have been getting your confetti inks from Claire or TV or from me. And it seems like a lot of you have been getting your sale items too. Just reading the lovely comments below here. So it's brilliant. So you've got lots to go out there, lots to play with. If you're wanting any help or guidance with any of the products that you've um, bought to expand your range you can ask any questions over on our eureka fan page the design team are there to help you if they can't answer it i will try if i can't we will find an answer for you so just enjoy them that's what you've bought them for and i can't wait to see all of your lovely makes let's have a look postcard let's have a look please oh i can't read it quick enough it's moving too fast hi tony received my thank you stamp and postcard stamp Brushes not in the post. Yep, the brushes are going out in the post as from today and tomorrow. There are a lot. It's going to take us a while to get through them, but they are here and they will be with you within a week or so. Royal Mail is taking between five and seven days. And I do think a lot of you are getting mail up to about two weeks as well, which I suppose it depends on the area. So um, they will be sent out to you and it's really down to Royal Mail to get them out to you as quick as they possibly can. So fingers crossed you'll have them soon to play with. Also a quick one about emails too. We are getting through emails. We're getting lots of emails every single day, more than, more than 
any than we're getting at the moment we're getting lots and lots and that's fine but we do deal with them all on each entity on their own so if you have it emailed us we are getting through them for you so please be patient on that front right okay so please explain the different color boxes on the Himi set so if you go back to the video when I showed you them live on air you have a watercolor one which I believe is an orange tone this is going from memory the gouache is the green and the purple and blue is the acrylic so you've got three different mediums gouache acrylic and watercolor so go and check those out so they all do different things some give you dimension some give you texture some give you permanent results you can reactivate some of them and then you have your traditional watercolors so i hope that helps so only place my order wednesday received that's brilliant paula brilliant it does i don't think it matters so it's just sometimes if royal mail have got a really busy like collection it takes a little bit longer but yeah they are getting turned around some people are getting them in two or three days which is amazing too so it's lovely to see you all let's have a lovely hour or so crafting that's why you've all come before we get into our crafting though um uh, yep sorry quick one the sale is on until tomorrow and um i'll take it off i'll give you the opportunity to have a look if you haven't had the opportunity i'll take it off tomorrow night um, so go and have a look if you haven't had the chance it's just if you just go to www.stampsbyme.co.uk go right to the bottom of the left hand side and there is a club sale in there to see the reduced you already get a reduced price if you are not a club member but if you are a club member just click into the product and you will get an even reduced amount on there as well which is some really good prices in there for you too oh my gosh question 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 let's have a look um so the sale ends tomorrow night. The tubes are watercolour in the sets. So you have a watercolour set of tubes, an acrylic set of tubes and a gouache set of, set of um, tubes. So it depends which set you bought. So <laughs> please tell us what you're using today. So yeah, I'm getting round to it. I'm getting round to it, honest. So uh, in today's studio, we're going to use obviously the lovely Craft Academy stamp, which is this one. The floral one before we actually start though i'm just going to quickly show you the other ones there is a handful of the other ones left so this is the one that we're working on today so if you've got this you're going to need this stamp we also have a couple of week two which is the trees we have a couple of these left so if you're wanting to come back and revisit um, and watch them on youtube you can do that we have a couple of the swing left as well not very many and then next week's one is the beautiful blossom one so if you haven't got this one and would like to craft along along in real time this one is next week's and it's the huge blossom stamp there and then on monday we will launch the next stamp in the 12 week academy and i think it's one you're all waiting for i don't know what you're all waiting for but i think i have an idea that you're all waiting for that one So Susan, can I tell you what is in the boxes? I can tell you what's in the box boxes. So the watercolour one sold out. So I won't talk about that one, but there are some acrylic and gouache. So basically in the set, you get 18 tubes of the paints. You get your brushes, you get a palette, you get a water bucket, you get an apron and you get some paper. Have I missed anything out? You get a sketch pencil, you get a rubber, and I think you get a little sharpener. I do encourage you to go back and watch the video though, because I'm doing all this from memory and I'd hate to tell you that there was something in there that's not, but you get about 12 or 13 items in the box set to um, get you going with your craft. I hope that's helped. Annette, I think I got, did you write me a little note? Annette, I think we've got that one. It's on the desk to be dealt with, sweetheart. Uh, I will have a look after show. Right, can we... Um, any emails, returns, inquiries, we are honestly getting through them. Because what's happened is paper, people ordered things by mistake and are having to return them. We're sending the replacement correct one. And, you know, it's something... Sometimes communication gets lost a little bit. But, yeah, we, I think we are getting them all back. Did I miss the box? I don't think, I don't know if there's any left. So if you go to FBL on the 
search engine on our website. Sorry, there's so many questions today. I'm a little bit overwhelmed. So if you go to the search engine on the website and pop FBL, that's where you'll find all the Craft Academy stamps, all the products we use in show. And I will tell you today, I have reloaded some items that were out of stock. So a lot of the distress inks I've reloaded, although I've got to reload a lot more. I, did, I ran out of time. The tins are back in stock. Um, and then there's the sale and I am using some things that are in the sale today so if you did buy them in the sale you'll be able to craft along today if not you do not have to have the products we are using in show don't forget that um, you can dig out of your stash what you might have and I'm gonna have a quick drink because I'm trying up here <laughs> what is in the box <laughs> oh, Margaret just press rewind sweetheart <laughs> You can go back and watch anything I've said. You can pause me at any point and then you can <laughs> catch back on. Oh, so, and I've already done a show on it three days ago showing you what's in the box as well. So, but if you want me to personal message you after the show, sweetheart, because you've missed it and you don't know how to do all of those things, then please do and I will sort it out for you. Oh, let's have a look. <laughs> Everybody's laughing now. <laughs> so let's have a drink. Let's have a drink. 10 minutes into the show, what's going on? <laughs> Have the blending brushes been put? <laughs> Stop you winding me up now. <laughs> what is the box, Tony? <laughs> Stop. Stop. I, when I, I'm a nightmare when I get going. Please stop. <laughs> now breathe. So, yeah, you just go back and watch the show. The blended brushes are going out from today. It should be within, <laughs> within five days. Rio, get me a gin and tonic right now. <laughs> so I'm not going to look. I'm not going to look because we're never going to get any crafting done. So if you are crafting along today, I'm going to be using my Generation Inks Reinkers from the sale. We're going to be using some gold embossing powder, a sticky ink pad, and the lovely stamp and some normal white and black cardstock. I'm not even looking at the screen because I was just going to crack out laughing. I need to stay away from the screen at the moment. So, a, a lady last time in show basically said that she wanted to do the real messy card, which was this one. I'll just show you here. So, this is the one that we're focusing on today. I can't stop laughing. I'm really sorry. This is a card we're focusing on today. How big is the box, Tony? <laughs> stop, you are literally doing that to me on purpose. Jeannie, stop. So we're doing this one today. So somebody asked me if we could do the messy one, and that's exactly what we're going to do today, OK? Oh, my goodness me, you haven't half cheered me up, you lot. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> So we're going to focus on this one. So as you can see, on this one, I did it with my Tim Holtz Distress Inks and coloured it. If you haven't got your Distress Inks, you can use your watercolour pans. If you've ordered the tubes, you can use your tubes. But for this demo, I am going to use the reinkers from our lovely Generation Inks. They are a beautiful watercoloured ink that you can dilute down and colour as a traditional colour if you want to. I'm not even looking. Once I get going, you can imagine, can't you? So let's grab our Eureka first of all. And let's get this image done. So start to finish, you're going to need three pieces of white card. This is just half a piece of A4. I don't look at the screen now. It's so bad. Are they all still doing it to me? <laughs> so you're going to need three pieces of A4. A5 cardstock. When I say A5, that's half of an A4 piece of card. So grab three pieces of A4, grab two pieces of A4 card and cut them in half and you'll end up with four pieces. But you only need three for this demo. And then I've got a piece of black as well, uh, just for our mat and layer. And this is half a, a piece of A4. So what we're going to do, first of all, is we're going to heat emboss two images of the same stamp. So let me just grab my stamp. Oh, it's here. It's totally thrown me now. Yep, so the numbers of the inks are 
DP03, dark purple 03, we've got fuchsia 03 and we've got um, dark grey 03. So these are in the sale. If you're thinking, um, I haven't got anything like that, I haven't even got anything to colour with, I've popped these in the sale with the ink pads. So you can use them to hydrate your ink pads if you want to and they can be used for your stamping and things like that. But these are um, staple items that you're probably going to have in your stash all the time because we paint with these quite a lot. So those are the three colours. So I've got a grey and a, like a fuchsia and a purpley colour. So what we're going to do first is I'm just going to pop this piece of card into my Eureka and we're going to heat emboss. Now, if you haven't got the heat emboss equipment and you're quite new to crafting, just do it in a black ink, okay? So there are alternatives. You can still cre create this artistic, uh, messy looking card even if you haven't got the heat embossing equipment. So just grab a coloured ink pad or a black ink pad and you can still do the same. So because I am heat embossing, I am going to use my anti-static bag all over, get rid of any moisture on that card. You lot are making me laugh. Wait till I get outside and see my car. I hope he's, <laughs> I hope he's not using a Brillo pad to clean my car. Could you imagine? <laughs> so I'm using the sticky ink pad here. And just light tapping all over that stamp. And then we're going to gold emboss. And we're going to repeat this process. We're going to do it twice. Push it down. Now, you're going to see differences in this card to the one that I've already done, and I'll tell you the reasons why. On the other one, I used watercolour card. On this one, we're just using everyday white cardstock, what you'll have in your stash, okay? And you'll be able to see the differences. And then at the end, although you've crafted along, if you want to repeat the process and maybe try it on some watercolour card and see what a different texture you can get, then you can do that, can't you? But I appreciate not everybody's got watercolour card, so it's always good to try techniques on white card, normal, everyday white card, and watercolour card, because you will get different results. So let's get some embossing powder onto here. I'll just grab a piece of paper, or a card blank, just to catch my embossing powder. I'm going to do mine in gold, but again, if you haven't got a gold, silver, black, any colour you've got in your stash. There we go. So you can see it's all covered beautifully. It picked up all that lovely detail. So I'm just going to set this aside because it's not going anywhere. The powder is stuck to that ink and it's not going to do anything until I heat set it. So what I'm going to do is whilst I've got my um, stamp out, I'm going to move on and do the second one at the same time. So I'm just going to pop my card in here. And just see if my stamp's in the right place. Nope, just move it over a little bit. It doesn't matter if it's not in the centre of your cardstock, guys, because you are going to fussy cut it, okay? So, oops, too far now. Let's go there. I'm just going to use my anti-static bag again. The craft one. Yep, if I've got time, I will absolutely show you, yeah. I've wasted half my time. Start laughing at you all. <laughs> but yes, of course I will. So, anti-static again. Sticky ink pad. Get all that detail if you can. I'm going to do it one more time just to make sure I haven't missed anything. There we go. So just 
attach the powder onto some scrap card or a card blank. And then we have our two lovely uh, embossed images. Not heat set yet, but two ready to go. There we go. <laughs> no, I nearly when I put my when I put the glue up my nose, I um I thought I'd given myself a nosebleed. I didn't know whether to laugh or cry quite crazy really but you know these things happen I'll laugh about it now it wasn't funny at the time <laughs> so just pop that back on the mat there quick have a drink <laughs> I know Amanda they were all winding me up about the box <laughs> Tim was sat chuckling in the corner so let's just move this set this aside because we're not going to need it for the time being and let's heat set our images so we've got two lovely images here. So get your gun hot. <laughs> it's lovely, isn't it, to come and have a chat with your friends, even though you've probably never met half of them like me, but it is lovely to come and come and chat with like-minded people who enjoy the same thing. So as soon as your gun is hot, all you're going to have to do is place it on the powder. And as soon as the powder changes, I hope you can see that, as soon as the powder changes, move your gun. it goes like a beautiful metallic gold remember the technique that I showed you in the last studio though mixing your embossing powders up don't be scared to do half and half let's move on to our second one like one side silver one side gold or spots of color spots of heat embossing all over there we go lovely heat embossed images or two off should we say so the the images itself just in heat embossing they are stunning and I've seen a lot of you making cards with this different techniques as well which has been great so you've been doing what I normally do and try and look at it in a different way and trying to create something that's not what everybody expects which is good it's good so what we're going to do next is quickly fussy cut now you're not going to start fussy cutting all around the edge because that's you can do that with your trimmer but all I do to fussy cut is I'll leave a little bit of a border but listen I'm not the best fussy cutter in the world um, but by the time we've painted this the fussy cutting you can't even see so just go around with your scissors the best you can quite random because it's all going to get coloured I've shown you a few techniques now on how to hide fussy cutting if you're not the best like me um, but just go round it doesn't matter if you get really close to the image or you leave a slight border you're not going to notice it when we come to put the color on and we come to matte and layer it now down here there is a little bit of bud i'm sorry that bud's got to go it's just too detailed for me to want to fussy cut around but if you are a fantastic fussy cutter and love to do it you take your time with it
and this is where you get your beautiful dimension because you could do actually do this three times you don't have to do it two or you could cut out some of the embellishments the flowers or the leaves and um, um, foam pad them on top you don't have to do the whole whole stamp like I'm doing there are lots of ways to create unique looking cards by cutting it up in various ways so I'm happy I'll just go with that one so we can see there we've got like it looks like a pocket doesn't it so let's just get rid of that waste and then we'll quickly do the second one I'm just quickly going round. If you are crafting along, you might be a little bit quicker than me, or you might be a little bit slower than me, but don't worry about it. You will catch up. And don't forget you can pause me if you want to pause me, or you can even mute me if you're sick of hearing me. <laughs> so I'm just going right down into that base there. done. I'm just going to tidy this little edge up. Round. There we go. So we've now got two. Can we see that there? So this is where we can be a little bit creative with our paint. So I'm going to show you a few ways to get this sort of arty texture. Now there are no rules, as you all know. Um, and you can literally get splashing and splashing and splashing and really go to town with it if you want to. But I'm just going to show you how I at least get the initial layer of texture down. So first of all, we're going to have to paint this. Now, the speed painting that I showed you the other day, drop the colour all over, spread it around if you're not interested in learning light and shade and then maybe a couple of minutes later add in a little bit of a second layer you can do that if you want to so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a brush and I'm using a round size hmm, round size 4 some clean clear water I am using the generation inks but you might have your Tim Holtz inks um, any water but your pens anything you, anything you want really they all work as long as they're water based so every, everybody have you all calmed down now <laughs> it seems everybody's calm at the moment right let's keep it that way hey so all we're doing is we're just going to pick up some you can see here I've just popped some on my lid and I popped the smallest amount as soon as you add that water they are so bright you do not need a lot okay probably Mind you, I am doing two paintings. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop this pink all over this flower. And I'm just going to quickly colour the whole thing. Now on the other card, the messy card that I did, you will notice I did pink and black. Well, pink and grey. And the reason I did that is because I didn't want to be the traditional pink and green, you know, your traditional flower colours. So I am going to stick with the pink and black today to show you that it might take a bit of courage to pick up the grey or the black, but it is worth it. And again, if you don't like it, guess what? You will have a bin. We can pop it in that bin, swap out the colour and do it again. Don't be, don't be hard on yourself if you, can't, if you don't like it. It's, it's a piece of card at the end of the day, isn't it? So let's just get this pink onto here. And as you can see, I'm not being too careful. White spaces as well look fab. So if you do leave a bit of white space, it still looks really effective. So there's the four flowers. Let's swap that one out for the next one. Pop some colour on these ones. Oh, 
like so. So we'll get lots of colour on this one here. And because we've done it in embossing, now if you have done it in ink, you will have to be a little bit more careful than I'm being. The embossing powder acts as a resist, so it'll push the ink away. If you have used your traditional everyday ink, just have to take a little bit more time than I'm doing today. Okay, make it a little bit neater, but because obviously it's heat embossed, it's acting as a resist, so it's just pushing it back within those lines. So there's all the flowers. So we've got two with flowers on there, look, coming together nice. So let's get some grey. Let's just clean my brush. So I'm just going to give this a, a good shake because if you've noticed this, these colours when um, I put them together they are my own mix so the, the colours do separate so you do have to give them a good old shake, get them going, get them activated. I'll pop some of this on my mat, not too much. And let's add the grey to our flowers here. So. So I'm colouring all of, now what I'm going to do is I don't want any white spaces in this, I want it to look really arty. So what I'm doing is I'm colouring the whole piece now. Everywhere where there's no flower, I'm going in with that grey. And I'm not bothered if it comes right down to this edge here and it's messy because it's going to get cut off because we're going to trim it right down. You do have to take a bit of time around your flowers though to not get the grey in the flowers. You need to keep them quite nice. But where you're up to that fussy cutting, put the colour in there. Be careful around your flowers though guys, keep it neat. And it'll look a bit patchy when you first pop it down because it's normal cast but it does dry back and it will dry quite smooth so don't worry about it. So I'm just going to cover this bit in grey as well. Anywhere else? So I'll just set that one aside to dry. Then the next one. So again, colour all over. And if this doesn't encourage you to pick up that brush, you can see it's not difficult. But, uh, I'm not sure how other way to get you to pick up that brush, but please do pick that brush up and just, you know, give it a twirl because you might really enjoy it. So just be careful again around those lovely flowers. Don't be concerned about the edges, they're getting trimmed off. So you don't have to be super neat there. Then a bit up here, look. Fill that little gap in there. There we go, so we've got two lovely images there. Give them a chance to dry. And you're probably thinking, do you know what? That looks like Tom's colored it. Yeah, it does. But as soon as you start to add your splats, you don't see them anyway. So let's just pop this on here. Now I am going to get a bit of a messy mat here. Let's just move everything out of the way because it's going to end up everywhere but. So let's just get a piece of card to catch, hopefully. So there are a few ways to make this look arty. So I'm just going to use the ink that's on my palette, on my top of my Eureka, I've not wasted any, it's the ink that's on there. And I'm just going to pick up some of the colour and I'm going to tap it on and I'm literally going to tap, 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 get lots of colour on there, tap, 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 get it all on there. So I'm trying to keep the pink within the pink but if it doesn't stay within the pink it's okay. It looks gorgeous if it stays within or if it doesn't so let's get tapping, tap, tap, tap. So the way that I do it is I tap with like my brush, tap, tap, tap like that. Um, there are other ways to do it. If you can't tap with your finger and you've got dexterity, hold something in your hand and tap off the end of something. That's usually a good way to do it as well. But I'm just happy to do it with my finger. But there are other ways to do it if you can't hold a paintbrush particularly well. So I'm getting lots of pink on there. And remember, it always dries back way, way lighter. So we might have to do a second coat of pink, it, pink splashes. Keep 
keep going. <laughs> you will end up with cramp after this now. <laughs> so a bit more on here. So I'll literally just go to town with it. And this is a great way to learn your splats as well. Because you can see how they dry, see how they work. So I'm going to leave that be with the pink and let's get some black on the bottom or grey as we're working with here. Now I'm starting to get cramp in my finger which is not good so I'm just going to grab another brush and I'm just going to tap off the edge of my brush here. Like so. And again it does look good if you get a bit of black into the pink so don't be worried if it all starts going a bit like oh gosh where is this going. Now if you're not a splat person, take your time to colour it in nicely, you'll still get a nice looking card without all the splats. So I'm going to set that one aside because that's done. Let's just bring this one in for some black, I'm just going to get some more grey, just enough for the splats. I think we'll leave that as is for now. We'll set them aside to just naturally dry because we can move on to the next step. So just set that aside. Then let's bring in our backing piece of card. So this is again where you can be super creative. So what I'm going to do is I'll use a flat brush here. Just take that one out of the water for now. Let's just move it over so you can see what I'm doing. And then all I'm going to do with a flat brush is I'm just going to add some water to this piece of card. Now it looks like this piece of this water's had some yellow in at some point, but do you know what? I'm just going to go for it. So I'm just going to pop some water on here. It's normal cardstock, remember that guys. So when you come to pound your colour in, you're not going to get it to move very well. So you're going to have to move it around, you're going to have to tease it and teach it that you just want it to go around a little bit more than it would if it was watercolour card. So I'm just picking up that pink from there. I'm just focusing on this little area here because our stamp, if you remember, comes, comes down here, doesn't it? So all of this at the bottom is absolutely pointless. So lots of colour, pounds, pounds. But you want texture, so try not, I know I've just done a line there, but try and get the pouncing in there if you can. So whilst that's still wet, I'm going to add the grey as well. Just in areas, fill in those white spots. Need some more grey. And some more pink. Oops, I've just picked up pink there. Oh, I'm going to have to put some more pink down, guys. I've just pinked it up. I know I'm not wasting it. So some more splots of pink on there. And some grey. Looks like your sun's done it, doesn't it? But as you all know, when we come to put the card together, it will look cool. And to stick it out right to the very end. So there we go. So what? how can we get more texture on here? So if you want more splats and things you can e you can do that equally as good all you need to do i'll just put some more color on here so an alternative way to get splats on your artwork is if you pick up some of the color and you use your finger so i forgot some tissue yeah to wipe my hand after and basically if you just put your finger on the end of the brush and flick off the end of your brush you get a different splatter can we see that there i'm hoping you can see that you get a different splatter on the background so I'll come right down so you can see, even though you're not going to see the bottom of it, I am going to come down and show you. Can you see that there? Can you see that there? It's a different splatter. You can see here in this little area, here. it's a different splatter to what you do if you tap off the end of a brush. So I'm just going to... Like so, and then we'll do the same with the grey as well. Let me just grab 
might be like just to clean my hand. Oh gosh, straight in my hair. Oh, it just gets better. Look at that. Straight in the hair. <laughs> I think I need a drink of my coffee. So I'm just getting a bit of a tidy station going on here because it's getting a bit chaotic. So let's move on to the grey splat. You'll probably be able to see these a little bit better now. So you have to get a mucky finger to get these type of splats, okay? So if you're thinking, I'm not a mussy crafter, um, that's no good for me, okay? So you might want to just tap off the edge of your brush. So let's pick up some of this grey. And again, you can see here though, because the card we're actually flicking it onto is still wet, it's sort of, you're sort of like getting blended, blended spots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry this off can you see there, you're sort of like blending out. Let's dry this off and then add more texture on top of a dried surface and you'll get a better result. that's dry enough so this is where we're going to try and make sure you get those defined splatters okay so I'm just going to grab some more color because it's dry now well dry ish it's still a bit damp but it will work so pick up some of that lovely just clean my brush and this is where you might get the defined ones here now there we go because the surface underneath is pretty much dry we are going to get definition can you see that there yeah, of course you can. Brilliant. So that's the pink, and we'll just sort it one more time in the grey. And then I think we'll leave that lovely background. I'll dry it off, and then we'll sort of like put something together so you can see where it's going. And this is where it was like knowing when to stop. So that other card, it started to get really, really messy. And I just thought, oh, do you know what? I'm just going to go to town on it. Literally go to town on it. If I like it, I like it. If you don't, it's going to end up in the bin. And that's what happened. But I put it together and it has actually grown on me. And it's a technique that I've actually enjoyed doing. Will I do it all the time? Probably not. But it is sometimes good to try these things. You know, stretch your, stretch your crafting capability. So let's just try this one off. Get rid of these blobs on here. They're going to be hidden anyway. So is anybody crafting along? Are we having success or are we ending up with a muddy mess? So I'll leave that as is for now. It's still a little bit damp, but I'm just going to show you what it looks like when you start to put it together, because I would like to show that lady the brown card too. So let's just clean my station. There we go. So I'm just going to grab my guillotine. I won't be a second. It's just here. So with the two that you've done these ones on, the coloured ones, I'm just going to trim off that nasty white edge. So all basically I'm doing is I'm taking it right up to the edge of our design, get rid of any white. And this is why it really was irrelevant if you didn't, if you didn't colour it perfectly towards the end. Because you would have cut it away anyway. So let's just get rid of that one. So then we have like a lovely finished piece now with no, see that there, no white, no white nasty border. And if you have got any white spaces, you can go back in with your colours and just fill them in. And hopefully there will be 
exactly the same size because I've gone right up to the image there. Right, so I'm just going to trim a little bit off this back border here, this one, our background, because I just want to show you as soon as you pop it on some black how it looks. I'm just going to take some off there and some off the base here so it's going to be hidden. And I'll just show you so you can see on when it comes to being put onto the black, you can see what's going on. So we have our black piece. Like so. Then you have your coloured piece. Can we see that there? And then all I did was I padded this one higher. Can we see that there? So you can see instantly it looks a mess, but as soon as you start to construct it, you're thinking, oh, I actually quite like that. And then if you it doesn't matter how high you push that one up or how low, when you pop your second layer on with pads, can we see that there? And then you can just stamp a beautiful sentiment in here, sequins. Make sure you put some pads underneath to elevate it though. And then what you end up with is something that looks a little bit like this. So it depends on how you do your splats, how you do um, your texture, how you do your colouring. Just experiment. You're going to end up with two different cards. This one is in watercolour card, so you are going to get a different look. And this one's on white cardstock. You might want to trim the white edge away like I've done on here. Uh, this has actually got some gold splatters on there, you know, using the lovely um, confetti ink, which I know a lot of you have, have got and probably have delivered today. So do we think that's okay? When you look at it like that, it does look horrid. It's, that's, and that, that's why I do encourage you to stick it out right to the very end because it will come together right at the last minute. So I'm going to leave that one with you. You can pop your sentiment on, matte and layer it, um, and then you can show us on the lovely Eureka fan page what, what, what you've been doing. So let me just tidy this one off. And I'm just going to quickly, because this is the last session you see on this stamp, because we do have to move on, I'm just going to quickly show you this brown one. I'll just clean my lid. So let's just move these brushes out of the way. Right, so let me just grab a piece of craft, which is just to the side here. There we go. So a piece of craft card then. So I'm hoping it's this card the lady's referring. This one or this one? I think it might be this one. So we're going to go with this one. I think this is the one that the lady wanted to um, me to quickly show. So basically, I'm not going to do obviously the card blank because that look that is pretty self-explanatory. It's this part I think the lady's um, wanting to know. So it's a white top folding note card. And then I'll just grab an ink pad. Um, so a brown ink pad for the background. And I just picked some areas of the stamp. And then with this part here, I stamped the, sen the um, stamp, which I will do actually, because we have got, I don't know if we've got time or not, but we'll just go for it. Let's stamp it out and show you how it looks on brown onto craft. Just grab my stamp. And we stamp it in brown. Now it's tone on tone, so you might have to stamp it a few times, just bear that in mind. So just ink up the stamp all over. If you've got the bigger ink pads, you know, the bigger ink pads are better for bigger stamps, but I only have a handful of the big ones. I, I predominantly use the small ones. So just put some co light coverage on there. Stamp it out. Let's go for it again. So I always say tone on tone cards look fab, greys um, onto blues, browns onto craft. Make your cards look super professional, I think. So hopefully that's enough for this one. So you can see the idea there. So what I did was... Let's just move this out of the way. So for this one, what I did was I made a square. So the stamp suggests that it should be a rectangle, but what I did was I cut a square out of it, picked the best bit I liked. So I think I cut it off about there and made a square this time. 
And then what I did, it's this on this one, it's white pencil, and then I went over it with my sparkle overlay pen. So all it is is white pencil. This is just this probably won't work. I don't know if it will work. Oh, it will. This is a glass pen, <laughs> pencil. Um, it works on glass and vinyl and metal, it says on there. But you have a white pencil in your Hime pencils. You will have, if you have white pencils in your stash, you will have a white pencil. So all I did, I always colour like this in circle motion, really soft, and it gives you like a vellum, a vellum look, really soft in circles like that. So what I did was, I did circles like that all over, so let's just do a couple of petals here. Circle motion all over the petal. So I got that initial lay down. Can we see that there? And then let's do this one. So I'm just getting an initial lay down. And I'm trying, the reason why I do it in circles is because you don't get the harsh lines. It's a little bit softer on the eye. Like so. And then what I did was to accent the image, I went back in and just added some shadow from the center out in lines. Can you see that there? Just adds a little bit of dimension. And you can press on as hard or as light as you want to get that little bit of shadow in there. Can you see that there? So initial lay down in circle motion and then with a shadow from where you would normally see a shadow. The lines are in the stamp to show you where you may see a shadow. Like so, I don't know if I'll rub it, if it'll make it any better. But there we go, can we see that there? And then I went over it with my clear sparkle pen and it sort of gives you this like, I don't know, burnished wood effect. I don't know if I like that. I'm sure you'll give it a go if you like it. And I hope that's helped the lady that asked the question. I just stamped it in the same coloured ink pad on the back as well, just to get rid of any like old white spaces. Excuse me. So I hope that's helped you at home. So two cards really, thank you to that lovely lady we've attempted. So we've just quickly shown you this one in brief and then the one where it's completely messy. And um, let's just show you stood up because sometimes they do look better stood up because camera sometimes does not give true of what things look like. There we go. So, um, that's the end of that stamp. It doesn't mean that it is now redundant. Please don't ever say that about any of your stamps. They are never redundant. We will always try and revisit stamps. Old, new, come in. We will always revisit them. Okay, so what will happen now is on Monday, we will start to move on to the beautiful Blossom branch. So if you have ordered it, it will be in the post or you might already have it or you don't have to order it at the time. You can go back and revisit the older things as well if you like. And I think that's week six, halfway, are we halfway through? I think we're halfway through. And then on Monday, I will launch the brand new stamp, which is the next one in the collection, which is a beautiful stamp. I'm super excited about that one. So I hope whatever you're doing, I hope you've had a lovely afternoon and you need to stop winding me up. I'm, I, I, I'm easy wound up, I'm only joking. I've had so much fun this afternoon, so it was lovely to see you all and I'll see you all tomorrow at 3pm. Take care everyone, bye.